Ah, there we are, and we are live. This is Conversation Community, and with me today is Manny St. Victor, and me... AKA is... Dr. Manny Cyanide. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> I was hoping for that. Uh, and me, as ever, your faithful servant, John Keldon, the founder and fearless leader of the Conversation Community, which is basically all about figuring out if we can be present in uh, conversations, interactions, connectivities uh, across these newfangled digital landscapes. I mean, it's still kind of, we're kind of at a loss yet what a digital landscape even is. I mean, to give you context on that and kind of archetypes, um, we seem to be very keen on obeying kind of the god of greed. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is archetypes and mind share. Mm -hmm. So there's once there's a standing wave in our collective psyche. Uh, just today, Facebook bought WhatsApp to the whooping yeah. tune of 16 billion uh, dollars. Wow. Now, this is obviously completely bonkers, but from an archetypal point of view, from standing waves, from people being basically happy with just sort of doing the WhatsApp thing mm -hmm. and uh, sort of be able to not pay the extortion amounts of, of, of funds towards the kind of the old incumbents in the telecoms so you can mm -hmm. basically send text the messages for free or rather you could sort of pay one dollar a year to WhatsApp. Now for Facebook now. has promised to keep WhatsApp separate but that's basically a lie because yeah, how you just separate from it? I mean, they just bought it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, they, we kept, we promised to keep malaria separate from the Indians. When we got here with those blankets, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. As Eddie Issa would say, we stole countries by the cunning use of flags. Yeah. And it's like it's like I would say to someone, "Well, these are my socks and 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 my my boxer shorts, mm -hmm. uh, and and they're independent." Yeah. Yeah, and fat Except chance, they've no, been no pressed would, against my body. <laughs> no one would ever believe that after after some heavy rotation, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a friend of mine back in the day when we were in med school, and you know, you'd be stuck on call, and he he did a double call, and he's like, you know, I'm tired of wearing these underwears, and I'm like, well, I've got some, you know, that I've I've washed and you know they're clean, and I brought from home. He's like, well, once they've been pressed up against your your click clackers, they are never clean again. <laughs> There's no amount of washing that can remove. <laughs> A certain element of ownership, you know. <laughs> yeah. And once once Facebook puts their little hands on on your information, your your privacy. And what's up with your privacy? You know, what's up with your privacy? You're getting fondled. Yeah. Your data is getting fondled, and it's going to commingle. Yeah, they're gonna find. Yeah, I mean, the data. It, and, and to be honest here, I mean, it's it's really okay for most of the Western population to be somewhat kinky. I mean, it, it's kind of, we are kind of mostly affluent degenerates, most of yeah. us, right? So mm -hmm. if you are a bit on the kinky side, Facebook really is a good option because mm -hmm. they are kind of a bit on the invasive side of things, at least when it comes to data. And mm -hmm. if we are brutally honest with ourselves, they are completely uninterested in us as people. But yeah. they are really, really uh, friendly towards our data. And this is where archetype becomes even more important. Let, let me just give you kind of what I mean by archetype. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a fairly uh, simple yet very surprisingly kind of profound definition. I call kind of archetypes deep, resilient, formative, collective patterns. Oh, they okay. coexist in our individual minds and in our collective. Now, to, 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 to look at these archetypes, whether it's the Virgin Aphrodite, or whether it's the, the fabled god uh, son Apollo, whether or, it's or the or the the mesmerms or the, the mermaids unicorns, or whether it's um, the unfavored son Ares, um, uh, these are you could say that they're beautiful, but not in kind of the 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 the, uh, the westernized sh shallowification of beauty which is so kind of rampant right now right mm -hmm. when something is awesome i mean a hamburger is awesome for crying out loud right it's right kind of up until that yeah I mean, I mean beauty is kind of i mean once you experience beauty and you are transformed by the experience then you have a known beauty i mean if yeah. if someone 
comes into your general presence and you basically swoon and you're not the swooning type then yeah. you have known beauty right so yeah. to, but to give kind of the, the additional definition which is very tightly connected to the definition archetypes so beauty mm -hmm. is resonance across seeming, seeming gaps mm -hmm. and it's rediscovered in three ways it's through art science and play yeah, now, let's uh, play. <laughs> I mean, I mean, art yeah. is has basically kind of been living a. I mean, because our, I mean, you could say son. That, yeah, you could say that science and play are the kind of the two mutant offsprings of art. Mm -hmm. Now, so art is the kind of the 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 real mojo, right? Yeah. When you, I mean, when you create babies, and yeah. hopefully most of our readers and viewers know how to do that. Those then are survival. That is kind of pure art. It's you, creativity, literally. Yeah, you kind of get both your and your partner's mode you're going in such a deep and transformative way. So you basically send up a beacon towards the universe and mm -hmm. another sort of kindred soul, fellow spirit comes and joins the party. And lo and behold, a, a baby, Life. right? Yeah. <laughs> this is obviously since most then fall into the trap of becoming parents, which is a cultural construct which is yeah. kind of a strange combination of stuff, then it's kind of an uneasy alliance. But if all goes well, we realize that this is a third thing to the equation, that this is kind of the, the, the artifact, the child. So we, we'd better be on our best behavior to give that child as good a kind of start as possible. But we haven't yet gotten to the part where we realize that since this is kind of the future generation, we are relics. We are kind of a constructive nuisance at best. We're skeomorphs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 but at best and at worst we are kind of basically just a, a, a waste of space in, in the kind of unfolding space of, of I got a word. Child. We're vestigial. Yeah. We're vestigial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that is just... also obviously of course, also another Archetype, whether you go called by the Roman Vesta or by the, the Greek Hestia. So it's 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 all archetypes. And let me kind of state again, they are deep. I mean that sort of goes without saying, mm -hmm. because we need we need to uh, have a sufficient uh, semi-permeable boundary between our conscious and our conscious without going completely crazy. I mean, we, so so there's two kinds of crazy. One kind of just sort of go full immersion mode into the unconscious and that turns kind of mania or, or depression or uh, bipolar or schizophrenia yeah. or, or neuroticism or, or psychosis or kind of any kind of, of those kind of fun things but th there's, there's an equally uh, dangerous disease which is sort of basically kind of put down the kind of iron curtain between conscious and unconscious and yeah. then you basically turn a bureaucrat or a narcissist or yeah. a solipsist or yeah. basically just kind of your, your ordinary run-of-the-mill cynic. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, so for me, a cynic is basically someone who is kind of slightly mentally retarded. Well, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, kind it's of, a, it's just that we don't have pills for it yet. But I, 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 would, I, I mean, I would love to sort of prescribe, it. Hey, oh, you're a cynic, oh, sorry to hear that, here's a pill for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and this pill is called reality, by the way. So it's yeah. kind of... Uh, it has some kind of harmful side effects, and, and one of them is kind of waking up to reality, right? Possible it's, it's insanity. insanity. <laughs> then again, <laughs> Zoloft causes risk of suicide, so if, if antidepressant can put you at risk of suicide... <laughs> yeah. You, you, you could call it kind of a, a, a kind of temporary wake-up call called insanity, which yeah. is spelled kind of Z-A-N-E. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, so th this is kind of also what, what we kind of lapsing into, which is fun, is play, right? So yeah. with play, you have, even though it's kind of a mutant offspring, it has quite good sea legs in all by its own right, kind of the, the, the play part. I mean, we, we, we need to sort of weave in, kind of, hopefully later on in this end, kind of some, some science, uh, another kind of mutant offspring of art, which is, has the good effect that it's kind of a cultural standing way which can actually be scrutinized and sort of it holds under scrutiny it can be discerned uh, now so discernment is uh, as I see it kind of a constructive compromise in between what the collective wants 
and still we retaining as children of the universe some unique value characteristic of our own. Yeah. Now, uh, so archetypes are very interesting in that respect because this is kind of where the formative thing is two ways. Let me re reiterate that again. Kind of the four qualities of the archetype that are deep, resilient, informative, and mm -hmm. collective patterns. Yeah. Uh, up until the 20th century, deep and collective was kind of oh, that's kind of young, young stuff, or this is Freud stuff, or Adler, or... or, or yeah, uh, now it's uh, called semantic or, search. Or, yeah, yeah. And, semantic and, search. And, yeah, and, and, and let's, let's put those psychiatrists away in the loony bin together with their patients and give them some pills already, right? And then we can yeah. watch TV, kind of. So, I mean... Yeah, make sure you don't use Google search, though, because then you'll find yourself in the collective and, unconscious. Uh, and, I mean, you could say that most mass media... Huh? is uh, this uh, lopsided view of archetypes where yeah. archetypes are deep and collective. Are they yeah. resilient? No, because the world is going to hell in handbasket and by watching TV series and TV shows are we going to save the planet? No. Uh, no. Each of those uh, entities has enlightened self-interest. I mean, yeah. it, the, 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 the most beautiful example is actually Seinfeld which is not formative at all. It was almost kind of a rule that the, the characters in Seinfeld should not evolve at all. And obviously then, since everything follows the laws of archetypes, they had to kill these characters, right? Because they would sort of, otherwise it should have gone, went on and on and on. And, and I mean, even Jerry Seinfeld realized that he had created a monster. So, so this is also kind of a neat definition of a monster. So uh, uh, an archetype turned monster, mm -hmm. which could be anything from the United States of America to uh, Swedish beliefs in their own cultural superiority and kind of a s social civil engineering, mm -hmm. or Disney's belief that they sort of own uh, the whole cartoon world, or yeah. all those other kind of misguided beliefs. That they are they are monsters, right? Mm -hmm. Archetypes that haven't sort of gotten. To, to develop all their, 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 their constituent parts. Yeah, now, they fail to so, contextualize, to evolve yeah, the context. Yeah, they, they kind of, they, they somehow lost their, their touch with, with the, the ecosystem. Reality, so yeah. so that, that is kind of the, the additional thing. Uh -huh. Seinfeld scores zero on the formative part on the archetypes. Uh -huh. um, and uh, most TV series, or rather the cultural practices that ensue from them, they fail on the resilient part of um, the archetypes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the beauty is then both metaphorically and literally what is going to save us. Yeah. But it would be, I mean, the planet doesn't need to be saved. The planet is fine. This is kind of where I plead George Carlin. The planet is say the planet is fine. We are fucked up. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of where, but this is kind of where it's interesting to see that we can actually go one better than you'll call it. And I notice that he that he says we are fucked up. This is a very very good American, almost likely on the colloquial side of things, definitions of. I mean, the whole Occupy movement kind of also sounded that clarion call when they said that things are fucked up and shit, which is mm -hmm. kind of the closest cultural truth that you can ever get from kind of a summing up of the whole 20th century, right? Mm -hmm. Things are fucked up and shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and this is where if you fuck things up, you create mongrel offspring, right? Yeah. So, so that there's a kind of a glitch in the transmission of the DNA. There's, yeah. a, trans tra there's a glitch in the um, how your code sort of gets scrambled and not in a good way. Yeah. So then creativity, contrary to what most people believe, is all about making sure that the options you choose are yeah. sort of the not only the wise ones, but I mean because they, let's face it, we have Google search, so we are getting sort of increasingly wise in a kind of a practical sense. If we want to buy a hot dog or a hot rod or a hot woman or any kind of other kind of what's mm -hmm. hot right now, uh, we can do Google search and, and lo and behold we will find the stuff, yeah. whatever stuff we desire. But uh, so the wisdom is taken care of. But beauty 
less so. But there are kind of hopeful signs with your mess mums, with my idea of um, what you could call, um, I mean, I've sort of distilled it down into perception is 80% of success. Yep. You could also, s yeah, you could also say that it's kind of um, wisdom is all about the ability to choose gladly that which I must do. Yep. But this is the agency part. Man, agency is a bit useless if you don't, if you're not receptive to beauty. Yep. So you could say that it's all. Um, the agency part, if you kind of put an integral viewpoint of it, uh, that's basically just an action. Yeah. So uh, effective uh, agency and, and, and agency is then writ integral. Now, but that is still um, not sustainable and not resilient, not thrivable if you don't uh, notice uh, beauty. I mean, yeah. you could say that a uh, a bureauc bureaucrat is wise within a very kind of small box, but is a bureaucrat beautiful? No, no by default, never, because yeah. beauty never kind of enters that small secluded area, right? Yeah, the rigid. I mean, it, I yeah. mean, it, it, it's kind of a, a bureaucrat, and, and the tragedy of the bureaucrat, again, I mean, a tragedy or a comedy is kind of interchangeable but in but if you the simplest analogy is probably seeing the bureaucrat as participating in, in a tragedy. And I mean that both in, in the normal sense and also in the Greek tragedy sense, right? He's basically a waste of space. Uh, so uh, then the tragedy is that he tries to pull off and call that something something ugly is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the universe is basically very very Tolerant and very persevering and very patient and basically says, no, it isn't. It will yeah. never be. Yeah. What the so immune system kind of does is put a wall up against that. You know, we get granulomas yeah. that way in the human body. And the universe yeah. treats information recursively in the same way. You know? So what you'll find exactly. is that those that chose to 1% themselves and those that chose to 1% themselves from within the 1%, well, you know, they'll become sort of an enclosed entity. And then the the information will move on, and they will yeah. obsolete. And that's the definition of extinction is you know speciation and extinction. When you're no longer interacting with the rest of the collective, you know, and you inbreed yourself just right, you know, you get to do your King Henry King, you know, you know, yeah. you get to do yeah. your Henry yeah. VIII where you start cousining a bit, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in in, in from the point of view of, of sort of pure ecosystemics, we are very close to the mongrel side of things, all seven billion of us. And it's, if anything, it tells us how kind of full of grace the ecosystem is. I mean... For if forgiving would, us and not wiping us Yeah, if, <laughs> very forgiving, right? I mean, if it would be up to me, I would basically see that, hey, there, there's people here who are, by their actions, just mm -hmm. wanting to go like lemmings and heading over a cliff. Mm -hmm. Give them a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, a little north wind. We, we, could all, we could almost set up a kind of road signs, right? Cliff, yeah. that away. Yeah. <laughs> Knock yeah. yourself out. Well Metaphorically and about literally, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just that people seem to be a bit having, I mean, again, this perception thing, right? And, and do they see their own beauty? No. Do they want to, 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 um, Express their own beauty? No. Um, if their own beauty sort of comes, kill your beauty. Just, yes. <laughs> if the beauty can't just sort of, sort of impacts them, kind of from seeing a nice pair of titties on the web, or a beautiful woman in real life, or a uh, moving transformer. I mean, we, again, reminding kind of the the the. The three leaders, the three viewers that we have left now, after mm -hmm. having kind of have this archetypal onslaught, but uh, beauty is kind of transformation, and transformation is beauty, right? So, so this is probably where one of the most damning words there is in the English language is the word change. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Now, so if we see now that, uh, do I want? I mean, let's say if I'm a tourist and I want to go to Greece, uh, do I want to go to pristine beaches, uh, nice sunny weather, getting a nice tan, uh, having a nice beer with a really really quaint cafe at the seaside, taking a dip in the sea? Or do I want to spend uh, time in some kind of a uh, fake experience, kind of in a kind of mass tourism place? I mean, I, I, I want the real thing, right? Even as a tourist. Now, uh, but surprisingly, I mean, I could give you the Swedish example. I, I once overheard a woman who said, and she went to, to, to Mallorca, which was used to be very, very popular among my Swedish tourists because half of the, 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 the people there kind of servicing the Swedish tourists speak Swedish, right? So it's kind of convenient, convenient right? But oh, no, when she got, back, yeah. she, she, she got back, then she complained that this particular hotel she stayed in, they didn't have Swedish knackerbrod, rai vita, right? So yeah. it was kind of ruining the experience for her because she actually never left Sweden, although she was geographically in another place on the planet, right? Yep. And and this is where, uh, I mean, let me translate that kind of so it makes kind of even more sense for 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 our viewers. Uh, when we are in these digital landscapes, archetypes and all, beauty and all, uh, I mean, archetypes is what constellates in us kind of our own unique story, kind of our own unique mix of archetypes, and beauty is what is we are need to have open eyes and open minds and open hearts to be impacted by the beauty. Again, reminding that beauty is transformation, transformation is beauty. Now, but what we bring to the digital table is, let's put this in a, in a, in a map, let's put this in a folder, let's put this in a box, let's put this in a category, uh, bugger all, I'm not interested in my own unique story, I'm not interested in being impacted by beauty, I'm not interested in living a fully, deeply vibrant, meaningful life at all, so I'm going to go full hog SEO and social media marketing. Yeah. Now, it, it's content to marketing. Point, yeah, I mean, content marketing, yeah. Uh, euphemisms FTW. Yeah. Um, or WTF, sorry, my dyslexia, <laughs> yeah, my dyslexia yeah. gets me every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And this is where uh, th these are people who, for some strange reason, try to foist sort of ugliness on people. I mean, I'll tell you why. Today. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, this is there's a game called projective identification that you play until you're able to develop the right level of mentation, self love, self acceptance. There are traits inside of you that you don't want to accept as part of you. So as you work yeah. towards maturing, what you do is, if there's something that you're really bad at and that you suck at, it's much easier to spot it when people do it and be like, that's disgusting, and you, you label it other. And yeah. that's projective identification. Now, yeah. something to consider is that if, if you weren't aware of it if, it, if you didn't have a model of it inside of you somewhere and feelings about it, you wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't have that affordance to recognize that thing anywhere. So anytime you're, you're you know, racism and hate all work on projective identification. Yeah. You know, everything yeah. that you don't want to, because you want to be like, oh, that race is lazy. That race is disgusting. That race is um, conniving. These are all attributes that you've seen hints of in yourself, and you haven't matured enough to accept yourself as a multifaceted, multi-self, multi-identity individual. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. basically, are biting off the breast, so to speak. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, let me kind of weave this back into the, the archetypes and, and the beauty and the transformation. Yep. So, this is because this is important because this allows people to, to take basically a quantum leap in social presence in kind of actually uh, being present in any which media. I mean, obviously, this is a digital media, but you could sort of do it at home in your local community in your company among your peers in your relationships, and, and in your relationships <laughs> anywhere right so now return to some of the, the archetypes there's four virgin goddess archetypes right there's mm -hmm. Artemis 
Aphrodite, uh, Athena, and Persephone. Okay. Obviously, kind of Persephone is kind of a, kind of a judgment call, right? If she's kind of virgin after being raped by Hades. But I mean, the the thing is, that the virginity here mm -hmm. is, if you kind of look deep enough, it used to mean beholden to no man. Mm -hmm. Now this is important because this means, in my view, that if we sort of look at it from a viewpoint of beauty, then beholden to no man is that these all these sort of patriarchal theories, mm -hmm. whether it's power or money or greed or status, or, or owing someone for a rib that the God took from them to create you. Yeah, the whole, of, uh, the whole sort of the whole Adamic kerfuffle, right? Uh, I'm a man, and I'm uh, I'm I'm old, and I, I I have whiskers, so I'm more true than anyone else. No, you're not. Uh, so let's just put that down and put behind the barn and taken out its mister already. Now, beholden to no man means that these are inherently beautiful mm -hmm. women archetypes. So this means that they are helpful because if we were different, so. Every woman, but also all men who are kind of reasonably in touch with the feminine side, I mean basically the nurturing yin side, mm -hmm. are immensely helped by maturing through progressively more and more kind of including these archetypes in our own selves and our own personalities yeah, and our own expressions. I mean, yeah. I mean the, the, all the way down to uh, what Novalis said, basically, character is fate. Mm -hmm. This is kind of where it becomes really, really good to kind of own up your own projection. And conversely, for I mean, you talk about four goddess archetypes here, so let's give give it to to the the, the boys as well. Now, Ares is those boys who just kind of oh a cliff, a high cliff. Oh boy, let me jump off of it and see if I can break a leg or two. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'll broke be, one I'll be right and, back. Yeah, and, 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 right and, back. And, and boy, was that a great experience! So yeah. this is kind of pure Aris, right? And it's sports, and it's war, and it's basically kind of being impulsive and being pre pretty much testosterone-driven stupidity, yeah. right? But this is kind of a an archetype. So we're meant to do that, mm -hmm. and the ones of us that actually do survive, we are all richer for it. Now, there's also uh, Apollo and Hephaestus, which is kind of the, the, the favored sons. So the the goddess archetypes are all about sort of staying virgin or getting raped. I mean, this is kind of part and parcel of where if you're in this experiment called sort of embodied spirit and playing around on, on in the Gaia ecosystem, you are going to take a hit or two, right? Yeah. And some of these hits comes through a penis attached to a testosterone full male, right? So, so unicorn. So, Sorry. Yeah, the unicorn. Yeah. Uh, now, for men, it's a different game, right? Yeah. It's kind Have of. Have you ever thought about unicorns and the vomiting a rainbow thing? Isn't that like a, a, <laughs> yeah. vomit a rainbow? I'm like, is that some sort of divert, diversity ejaculation <laughs> metaphor? But carry on. Yeah. <laughs> carry on. The men. Not, yeah. Not, 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 not all rainbows uh, comes with a golden pot at the end, right? <laughs> Some just come with wet naps, <laughs> yeah, yeah. paper towels. <laughs> and I, I, I won't delve too deeply into the golden shower. That's kind of. For <laughs> <my time>. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, the the, 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 the game for the Let boys. <laughs> the game for the boys is kind of being. Is this something that the fates are looking upon favorably? Are the gods, are the fates, urdvadanti uh, and skuld? I mean, the the spinners of the karmic yarn, right? The karmic thread. Mm -hmm. Are they looking upon what I'm doing right now favorably or unfavorably? Yeah. And both as measured them, by offspring. Yeah, and as measured by, I mean, it's, so it's it's kind of one big sort of ongoing collective negotiation. I mean, we're seven billion of us, so. Obviously, we as a species, we are playing abundance, and it's almost as if an individual life. Oh, it doesn't doesn't matter in the slightest because there's seven billion, right? So it, this is if anything is meant to humble us and our kind of individual existence, it's that. So there's no safety numbers. Kind of on the contrary, 
that, that if we are only valuable to the collective in terms of how we manage to, to navigate our own archetypes. Yeah. Now, the saving grace here, and obviously the graces are kind of another set of archetypes, yeah. uh, is that they are bestowers of sort of navigational helpful hints. Now, one of the graces is basically called, if you roughly translate, she's called the memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is kind of, and, and one of the old other graces, I mean, they, they basically are... Uh, uh, a mesmer memory. sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, I mean, let, let's let's get into mesmers a bit um, mm -hmm. to see if we can sort of seg into the 21st century. We we sort of talked in our uh, last sand about um, things like memory, things like um, superheroes in 21st century. So the 21st century is different in one key respect. So there's a slightly different covenant available. Now a covenant is interesting here because the covenant is meant to be kind of combination of transformative beauty and tough love. That's a covenant. Now why a covenant? Why do we go all kind of biblical on our poor asses again? Because the archetypes are yet to express their full potential through us. And there's seven billion of us so there's a pretty big game in town. And guess what? If you're a human and if you're alive, you're in it. Yep. There, well, there's well, there's well, there's uh, so, so here's where lurkers, um, cynics, mm -hmm. academicians, I mean the, 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 the navel-gazing kind, philosophers, mm -hmm. uh, old men obsessing with their own power, solipsists, narcissists, basically fearful little twats or any kind of other version of strange sideline watching and wonking, mm -hmm. th that is kind of increasingly not an option anymore. Mm -mm. Welcome to dystopia. Yeah, because <laughs> dystopia, because, uh, I mean, up until now, the 20th century kind of was the supernova stage of utopia and dystopia, right? Mm -hmm. So we had utopias that were kind of those unreachable, unattainable, the the, the 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 abode of the gods, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where the, 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 the Olympic mountain, where the, these gods actually lived, and we were kind of mere mortals down in the dregs. But yeah. uh, and then dystopia was kind of the the, the 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 shadow. I mean, a shadow is obviously also an archetype, mm -hmm. and that's where we live because we had sort of designed it that way. So it, it, if this is kind of just pure cultural math, cultural algorithm. If we just define something as unattainable and if we sort of project goodness on what is unattainable, then yeah. we are down in the dregs. So it's yeah. very easy to create um, solipsist boundaries. I mean to, to actually choose stupidity. Mm -hmm. That's just expressing it differently. That is just to kind of define something that is desirable to you and to define it as unattainable. And, and there other. you go. Then yeah. you've created a boundary. Yeah. So uh, and this is kind of where coaching, consulting, politics, governance, mm -hmm. marketing, marketing, marketing uh, all of those are kind of, uh, hey, you can be happy. Just not if, today. If, Give me money. Yeah, if, yeah. right? Yeah. John, let me explain how yeah. brainwashing works, just yeah. real quick, for this yeah. context. Um, brainwashing works the same way that alcohol works. <laughs> alcohol has a linear absorption gradient. You know how you're never drunk enough, yeah. you know? It's always the next day that you're like, maybe I was, you know? That's, in college, you just, it's one of those things you don't learn. The reason is that your buzz doesn't come from the amount of alcohol you have. It comes from the transition rate, you know? Yeah. The rate, that, like the faster you're taking it in, you're like, I am buzzing, that absorption. But at a certain point, it levels off where you can't get any drunker, but you sure can get sicker, okay? <laughs> now, emotions are like that too. Emotions are sort of the buzz that you feel, well, buzzing is an emotion actually, so it's an easier metaphor than that. But yeah. it's, it's transition. It's sort of, how do I feel about where I'm headed? You know, if, if you're mind wandering and you're dreading the future, then you worry. If you're mind wandering and you put a positive valence on the upcoming event, then you're anticipating. Yeah. If you if you linger in the past and you're upset about the past, then you ruminate. If you linger in the past and you're nostalgic about it, well, shit, you ruminate then too because you're going to hit a brick wall at some point. 
you know, your, your emotions control whether you, you mind one or in the past or in the future. Because when you're sad, you tend to ruminate. It's one of the traits of depression. But yeah. you get stuck perseverating on mistakes made, and your, your counterfactuals tend to not be as healthy. Whereas when you're mind wandering in the future, your counterfactuals become learnable experiences. When you mind wander to the future, you do what's called contrasting, where you project what's attainable. Well, yeah. what, you, what the ideal is, you see how it's attainable, you see what the present is, you see the delta between the two, and you create yep. a set of steps, you know, you cut it into halfway, you do a reverse calendar, and you crunch it. You create a set of scenes to see it, and you create implementation intentions along yep. the way, cues to know when to do A, B, C. Yeah. Okay? Brainwashing works by hijacking those implementation intentions using yep. what's called yep. amygdala hijacks, where yep. um, every time you retrieve a memory, you change that memory. Now, if I can get you to retrieve certain memories by triggering you subconsciously, either by referring to a loved one or you know stressing you enough such that you go into autopilot, then as soon as you're bringing back that memory, I can alter that memory and alter your worldview so that from then on when you alter when you pull back that memory, it has a flavor of mine in it. You know? I, yeah, I leave a little yeah, sprinkle yeah. of rainbow and you know my unicorn leaves a little sprinkle in your mesmer. You know? Now let me give you a simple example of that. Um, as Kahneman says, um, there's the experiencing self. Yeah. And I can't remember the other one. The other one is the experiencing and the remembering self. There you go. Now, if there's an experiment he did where if you have someone put their hand in ice water, like slightly painful ice water, for 60 seconds, and then you have another person put their hand in ice water for 90 seconds, but the last 30 seconds, you increase the temperature slightly. And you ask the yeah, person which yeah, one they want yeah. again, they'll pick the 90-second one because the remembering self overwrites the memory of the experiencing self and you evaluate those two experiences, the second one is more pleasant to you. Anytime you go to a restaurant, they do this. They, they use the social pressure to reprogram. They're like, how was your meal? And you don't want to be an asshole, so you're like, it was good. And your brain from then on anchors that meal was good. Yeah, yeah. You know, because if, if, if you say anything but it was good, then here you are, the, 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 the bush bag that's in the posh restaurant saying, well, that, was, that was disappointing. And, Matter of fact, if I hadn't eaten most of it, I would ask not to pay. You know, it's, it's not the right answer. It's like when someone says, how are you today? The right answer is good, not, well, I have a molar that's impacted and it's been bothering me and I didn't sleep well last night and my hemorrhoid cream ran out. You know, that's not the right answer socially. No, no. You know? I mean, this is where, where I mean, we, if we look at social media as one of those hopefully relevant examples, uh, the... The perversity of it, I mean, if you look at kind of what goes on when gods and goddesses and archetypes are frolicking, lots mm -hmm. of per perversions going on, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Zeus is, is going to mate with a bush or a deer or, or a rock or a, anything that like, comes anything in his way, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because he's a god, right? He's kind yeah. of a, a pure procreation, and if you're standing in the way, you are going to be affected. Covered in rainbow. Right? You're going yeah. to be covered in rainbow. Yeah. Taste so, the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> it never rains, but it pours. Uh, yeah. No. Let, uh, let me go do a visual cue of the of the <laughs> of the golden shower metaphor that we lately implanted again. Okay, carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is important because. Um, the the default path is success to the successful, right? Yes. So if anything, uh, there's many more options. I mean, it's basically just uh, social media as it is today. And this, this is why I call social media still in the blinking HTML stage to, to, to anchor kind of a very kind of primitive metaphor and hopefully one that people will realize that if you believe that social media only allows for Zeus and Apollo then you don't you don't have any other options than just either sort of being the most successful and show where everyone with your graces and with your really? wonderful wonderful content right I mean yeah. con content in, in here is very much like P so you claim Wait, yourself, it or as Eddie Issa said, you cunning use of flag, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and and then kind of the other option is to be kind of the favored son, 
Yeah. And you go to your kind of uh, selected heroes, those who are showering with kind of learned treatises or concepts. And you juggle or, their nuts so that they don't get dribble on them. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then Nut juggling. Regardless of what they say, you chime in and comment wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. Well, while embedding a meme of your product, Trojan yeah. Horse. Uh, and and um, you kind of play the barnacle game. You kind of yeah. surf someone's coattails and you evoke all the seemingly uh, unavoidable power laws, right? Success to the successful and building the massive brand. And then to add sort of insult to injury, most of this content marketing says something to the tune of uh, do like this and this and this and this, and you will be massively successful. And it doesn't no, matter. You will make someone who's if, already successful massively yeah, successful. If it's if it's Wayne Chuck or if it's Seth Go, then it doesn't really much matter. Right? I mean, I could even throw in Dalai Lama for good measure. I mean, he's also kind of one of those who kind of sprinkles golden showers. Although I personally was kind of, um, if I want to be golden showered by someone, I would probably prefer Dalai Lama than Seth Godin, right? But I'm I'm yeah, kind of cool. drinks like pineapple juice or something yeah. healthy, so it comes down sweet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with these human social mammals, kind of sprinkling some 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 markers to 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 mark the the territory, right? To yeah. to to sort of to pee their turf. But what the reason for why I'm happy with that is that I have access to a slightly larger set of, of, of options because I know some of the other archetypes, right? So yeah. I could choose Trickster. I could choose uh, Hermes, kind of being a messenger of the gods. I could choose um, Hephaestus and kind of hammer out uh, some really concise, uh, compact, dense uh, tomes. And, and they use the lies there and shine. And whether it's kind of for immediate consumption or not doesn't really much matter because I hammered out a thing of beauty, right? And that's yeah. because that's what Hephaestus does. Now, the thing is, if I do that, it's a thing of lasting beauty. Now, if I go Aphrodite, I could basically shower someone, not with pee, but with love and affection, yeah. which with most people person. will realize, if I have the option of, of choosing love and affection or pee, uh, love and affection, please. I've I mean, got it, a it's video that. What, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, obviously, I'll yeah. <laughs> for, for 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 kinky Facebook users, it's, like the re it's it's the reverse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I can't have my cake and eat it too. I bake two cakes. I'm like, no, we're talking about urine, urine, urine. urine. Yeah, cake with a. <laughs> Cake with a slightly different taste. Yeah, yeah. meatball um, Sunday to use Seth Godin's metaphor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sli slightly tender on the side. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But now, John, I want to throw a mathematical. Um, yeah. uh, there's a discovery that was made last week, uh, a study that came out, that as it turns out, and I kind of had a feeling about this, um, mathematical beauty, like a delicious mathematical formula, excites the same part of the brain as a beautiful piece of music. And we all know music is math and the universe is mathematical. But yeah. beautiful art excites the same part of the brain. Last week they did the studies where they found that when someone who is um, who has a certain level of mathematical mathematical training understands the math to a certain level of abstraction where they can you know perceive what a formula intuitively means they get the same zwap as someone who's looking at you know beautiful yeah. artwork. Yeah. Now, Hofstadter has something that he said that I was running a lap two days ago. Um, I was on my second mile on an indoor track, so you think a lot more there because God knows you claustrophobia. But so uh, I was listening to uh, Tegmark's Mathematical Universe, um, and he brought back the symmetry concept that Hofstadter was addressing, that beauty is in unity is in symmetry. Yeah. So, um, and then Techmark pointed out that when you reach a certain level of abstraction, uh, usually through enough experience, um, a certain level of abstraction, you're able to look at two vantage points and in you know, categorization systems and drop out the elements that aren't the same between the two systems. It's a yeah. mechanism of creating symmetry. Now, yeah. Matt Blanco, which I was, uh, you remember I spent some time with Matt Blanco's book, uh, The Biologic Book. Yeah. I sent you a few clips from that in email. Uh, but what Blanco says is that the logic of the subconscious is a different, it's like a fourth dimension logic where 
you know, when, when you're thinking of something, it exists as both the positive and the negative of it. It isn't until you try to make it into concrete something, into a semantic entity, into a word combination, that you take it from infinity to uh, a constrained word, a category, a definite thing. That's crossing the limit. That's exactly. Going from I mean, I mean all, all, the, all the adjacent possibles exist simultaneously. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. once you decide that you observe one, you know, you, once you take the thought and you make it collide with air, make it collide with consciousness, you introduce it to someone else, then you're able to bring that, bring that, you know, you drop that free energy. You make it a certain entity. Okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, this is, I mean, this is where you could say that if, if it's all about, I mean, you could say that the gradient is also kind of wayfinding through kind of the suffering landscape. I mean, what yeah. usually people call their ordinary day-to-day -day reality. So it, it is yeah. pretty damn important, the gradient. Now, mm -hmm. if the gradient then can be transformed, or rather we kind of are transitioning through, surfing the wave, so to speak, and, and yeah. we, we choose the bumpiness depending on how well we take yeah. care of ourselves, how, if we eat well and if we relate well or if we kind of do the exercise and all, yeah. That. Yeah. The exercise. all those, right? BDNF, and, maybe. And, and then basically Exactly. Uh, the the transformation, whether it's uh, forming a superset out of the adjacent possibles, mm -hmm. or it's suddenly sort of discovering symmetries, or transcending asymmetries to a higher order symmetry, mm -hmm. you could say that in its most abstract form, this transformation of beauty, which mm -hmm. we kind of return full clock, kind of full cycle back to where we started, kind of the archetype being formative, patterns. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty that is kind of the, 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 the deliverable, the, the, the result, the outcome of this formation, uh, or almost gestation, I would say, because it's kind of, a, we are kind of part and parcel of, of, of the process, yeah. it's where, in its most abstract sense, mm -hmm. the output is science. Yep. So or art, could, or play. Yeah, and if we kind of, if we can sort of get kind of slightly more inclusive and we bring mm -hmm. ourselves along, then yeah. it's not science in the kind of just abstract sense as if it would sort of exist outside of us. Yeah. We become part of it, so then science then is uh, with emotions added back in. Once mm -hmm. the emotions are transformed and allowed to sort of exist happily with longer ride, yeah. um, then it's art. And the resultant vector is synonymous with play. So you can actually say that art, science and play are basically just three different ways of looking at the same process, namely the uh, re-owning of this sort of projection. Uh, yeah. The fun thing with the word projection yeah. is that you can sort of... projecting is fine as long as you yeah. don't disown it, right? So yeah. if you do projection and you still realize that I'm the one doing the projection here, then it's not a monster. Then it's yep. then you don't constellate other as something separate from you. Yeah. Because now, John, I mean, yeah. Sure. There's Go. a model of um, oh, it's a balance between what they call temperament and character. Sort of this is what makes up your personality going along. You have your default mode network, which is the core thing that's firing. And I think I mentioned that to you. That's the part of your brain that that's self. That's it. Yeah. That's dreams. Yeah. That's daydreaming. Um, now, if you apply enough pressure. A cortisol bath that con that gets constrained to the point where you perceive the universe is controlling you instead of being a free spirit, being creative, being balanced. Now, um, the default mode network is when you go Freud and Kant about it, it becomes like an ego id combination where you have um, to to kind of fend off the universe and have a healthy identity. You have ego control and ego resilience. Yeah. Now, if your ego control, if you over control then you end up with internalization disorders where you feel like you know just I'm a victim, self-inflicted injuries, depression, mm -hmm. learned helplessness. If you under control, you end up with sociopathy, you can't follow rules as needed. Now your ego resilience basically is your ability to take the feedback from the universe and adjust your default mode network. It just adjusts how much per context per situation. Yeah. Now we discussed before the cognitive reappraisal aspect. When you're in a situation, when you said surf the waves, that's the perfect one because that uses Hofstadter's metaphor of thoughts as sets of waves. And you remember I wrote the Mind Like Water piece a few months ago that I published. Um, when you're surfing the waves, imagine that your, your limit is like um, when you go subliminal, 
if you can realize that your archetypes are right there subliminally. So when an archetype pokes its head above and you see it, um, there's an article, another one called Learning to Like Disgust. Recognize disgust as part of you. It's part of what defended you from eating like animal shit or whatever. And disgust yeah. is a learned behavior. It's, it's the way that tribes protected themselves from each other. They would tell you, you know, that tribe over there cuts the tips off the penis of their, of their members. And you're like, oh, shit, that tribe over there drinks the blood of their god at every weekly ceremony. Oh, crap. You know, that yeah. tribe over there eats pork, and that's disgusting. They eat, they eat the, what is it, pork and cheese? It's yeah. not kosher that you can't put the baby in the nurtured food or something. I'm kind of ignorant to the details, but um, by creating these archetypes of self and other, you're able to give people something to identify with. And since as humans, we like that symmetry, when you give someone an identity, and it's like loading an operating system. Now, yeah, if, yeah. You, if anyone who doesn't have the same operating system as you, you go all Apple fanboy on their ass, you know, you're like Android, Android, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you 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 eliminate the ability to have empathy because you can't run their software in your head. You make the assumption that they're other. You start jihads against them. You know, you start um, crucifixions and whatever. You know, once you objectify someone to other, then you know. Remember the rules we have. It's like, is it going to kill me? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, can yeah, I, I mean, eat because it? I mean, th can this I is where the the, 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 the the ordinary reasoning then. Is I mean it's it's perfectly fine once you sort of got yourself stuck basically in inside a very kind of narrow and constraining box you're you're making then mm -hmm. all those kind of normal ordinary rules are kind of let, let's kind of defend this box mm -hmm. let's put others out uh, let's yeah. look down on them because they are yeah. not in the in box yeah I mean in, 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 paradigm it's I mean I mean uh, th that's also one of those very damning words right having an inbox in email it's kind of like yeah. Uh, it's like in the quest for control, you allow everyone else on the planet to 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 control the, yeah. the, 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 the 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 flow of your own time and attention yeah. and, and and work, right? So it's 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 one of those uh, probably email was one of those things that was kind of left in the Pandora box. Um, now. And obviously, Pandora is also one of those archetypes, right? Yeah. She, she basically. I, mean, I think, in the classical sense, I think it's it's hope is the one thing that is kind of left inside the box when all the kind of plagues and the suffering is kind of have escaped from out of the box. Yeah. Uh, and but this is where uh, the secondary kind of helpers, Pandora, the Graces, the Muses. Uh, if we go sort of all Erish Kegel and Enki and Enlil and Inanna on our behinds, uh, they have sort of been up until now seen as kind of slightly more primitive, slightly more primordial. Mm -hmm. But if you look at, if I mean, if if people are rediscovering networks, and then you kind of figure out, hey, a network. If it's a human network, it should probably be somehow related to seven billion people on the planet. Okay, so what's a planet? What is a human? And and they could sort of go on to make their own definitions. But once they've done that, once they've basically done kind of the very simple and obvious math, seven billion people on the planet, and we are all somehow connected, right? Some more and some less, but it's it's kind of just one big meshwork. Yeah. Then they can basically oh, apply and, and, and look at their own internal makeup. So what dent in the universe, what graph traversal is mm -hmm. it for me meant to do? What would make the most sense for me to do? I mean, if I'm if I'm RS and if I want to be a bully, mm -hmm. knock yourself out. Uh, yeah. Just that quite Get your soon marketing on. I mean you <laughs> yeah and quite soon you will meet other bullies and then it's yeah. kind of comparing sizes and forms and, and shapes of, of the penises right yes. and yeah. go unicorn <laughs> go unicorn go it's just that this has been done already right yes yes so this is it, an environment of scarcity yeah it's kind of a boring ocean. game so yeah. instead go through the whole sort of pantheon of gods and chances are you will find a bit of, of vestigial things in yourself mm -hmm. you will find some Aphrodite, you will find some Hephaestus, you will find some Poseidon, you will find some 
what particular graces you are kind of leaning towards and uh, I mean this even a uh, uh, this even gods and goddesses in charge of luck and faith and serendipity right so it's, yeah. it's it's not that we are kind of left without options but if we are kind of limiting ourselves to no I don't wait to hear any one of those I want to do Zeus and I want to do Apollo I want yeah. to sort of Go if I'm a good son, I will hook up myself with a kind of an, 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 an all-knowing father, and mm -hmm. I will say yes to whatever that all-knowing father is, is is doing. Right? Yep. It's just I've that done. yeah, I've created an architecture where I by by naming my um my mesmerms and my archetypes in umwelt silk shake form, um, which is what I like to call it. I've made it such that the information transfer, the information like the viralness of it, the models. I made them so odd that when as they become attractors, it will be obvious that this is something that Manny put here for you to think about. Because yeah. whereas we, when we usually have the somatic markers that are keywords that we use all day, we don't think about the history of it. When we say cognition and recognition, we don't think that's cognition again. When we say creation and recreation play, we don't look yeah. at it and say, well, recreation was creating again. The RE prefix means something. So. By creating uh, stuff like you know wet pinky, like my wet pinky brand, the narrative that goes with that is it's the metaphor where Ella goes from mesmerum Ella goes from bubble umbrella princess, which is a marker I'll explain a little bit more later. She goes to wet pinky. Wet pinky is when she ends up impregnated. This is the model of a, in a man's mind and in, in core archetypes when a woman is pregnant all of a sudden. A lot of times in our culture, we've at one point it was a thing of shame where we kept these women hidden away. You know. Yeah, and now yeah. it's just a special fetish of pornography, you know, preggers or something. But um, with the wet pinky, it's it's thinking about that concept, the beauty of someone with child, someone about yeah. to give birth, but realizing that subconsciously there's a part of you that will project and displace some sort of maternal guilt. Like Elvis, I think, stopped sleeping with Priscilla after she had the first kid, right? Yeah, from what I understand. You know, I mean, I mean, to 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 tie this also with uh, the archetypes and also what is. Um, uh, again, the formative mm -hmm. uh, patterns and the patterning. I mean, you could say, and most people would actually uh, understand this, that a fertile mind mm -hmm. is pregnant with yeah. ideas and possibilities. Yeah. Here now, comes the rainbow. This Sorry. means that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so then, then Zeus is actually doing a good enough job, right? So, so yeah. if Zeus. Is sort of channel on a cognitive level in a very um, constructive and effective way. Sublimation. He gets your mind pregnant, and out comes Pallas Athene, fully mm -hmm. clad in sort of body armor and all. Right. I mean, yeah. this is this is the idea that has sort of grown sufficient legs and armor so it it survives outside of you. I mean, this yeah. is in these days we usually call this innovation. And I mean, yeah. innovation is one of those sort of sadly misunderstood words. I mean, innovation. I saw kind of an, an, an uh, I mean, just to give you kind of the, the 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 definition that sort of jives with archetypes and beauty. Innovation yeah. is about augmenting people's lives. Now, a yeah. small subset of that augmenting of people's lives is about solving customer problems. Mm -hmm. Now, or this making means, money. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> making money is obviously the outcome of augmenting people's lives and or solving customer problems, right? But if you look at the primordial definition, augmenting people's lives, then suddenly uh, resolving customer problems becomes easier and not more difficult. I mean, all the claptrap about sort of funnels and things like that, uh, the funnel is only necessary to have a very kind of strange and complicated with lots of moving parts. If you have it's objectification, I'm sorry. That's yeah, it, it, if you kind of first project the customers as if they are kind of at some distance from you, mm -hmm. you are superior and they are inferior, and yeah. lo and behold, they should buy stuff from you. Yeah, but they're instead, falling into if a funnel. You go what the fuck? Di sorry. Directly to augmenting people's lives. Yeah. For instance, reminding them that by doing the mesmer dystopia approach they have suddenly one additional degree of freedom, a, mm -hmm. a slightly different perspective with which to view stuff. Yeah. And once they have a, a better perspective on stuff, they are in a better decision, mm -hmm. position to make better decisions. I mean, yeah. the, 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 any they, changing categorization system, 
yeah. ch changes the way you regulate your affect. It changes how you look at the universe. It's, if, yeah. You know, if if you take a minute in your day, like my vanilla drain, con drain concept um, is vanilla drain, vanilla apostrophe D rain, which is the Whistler cosmetic product. So it's like, oh, it's, it's the product that claims it's a bath. It's like sort of a milk bath that makes you immortal. Now, yeah. remember the vanilla drain, the reason Worcester Cosmetic came up with Vanilla Rain is to cover up the fact that in the basement, the news was spreading the fact that, well, the knowledge that they were using bathtubs, these vanilla drains, to extract the mesmerum life fluids, the moist wet. Yeah. So Worcester went mind game on it. Yeah. You know? He replaced Vanilla Drain with the somatic mark of Vanilla Rain. You yeah, see, this is something that happens a lot in our society. It it happens all the time. Uh, let's, let's see if we can put kind of three or four different levels on this sort of innovation. Because what mm -hmm. we're talking about, once it is applied, once people mm -hmm. understand what we're basically on about, we're yeah. basically on about kind of giving people uh, slightly different and slightly better options. I mean, mm -hmm. based well, on while not exploiting them. Yeah, based on their own desires, basically. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with desire. But here's the thing. Uh, if we only do level one, basically stuff, then we will get stuffed. I mean, it's it's as simple as that, right? Or yeah. whether it's fast carbs or someone shoving some some bodily appendage down our throat or mm -hmm. up our behind or something, it really doesn't yeah. much matter. Either way, we, you will be penetrated. <laughs> we will get <laughs> stuffed, right? Yeah. Uh, so, getting stuffed by kind of turning into a veget vegetative receptive receptacle mm -hmm. through TV series or getting kind of getting the behind treatment in the back alley it's basically the same process uh, so you getting get vanilla drained yes <laughs> getting stuffed is is cool as far as it gets but it's a very limiting set of choices yeah. now step 2 in innovation is optimization yeah then you are basically having one slightly slightly more freedom in terms of getting stuffed how, why, and, and what, and where to, right? So yeah. it's an optimization thing. You, you're kind of participating, so the, the, the umwelt suddenly becomes... You, you so rediscover shady. your own yeah. umwelt, right? It's so so where, where, yeah. Whether it's in the hood, or, or in the rich man's club, or anywhere else kind of umwelt, you basically rediscovered it. Hey, there's an environment around me, and mm -hmm. I just can't sort of project on it or interject in kind of re retreat yeah. from it. Yeah. Now, so optimization is fine, but it's still limiting. What you want to do is kind of then begin to explore also the third level. And the third level is basically, well, you could call it from an innovation perspective and call it platform, but mm -hmm. it's much better to see it as kind of a dynamic framework. So instead of platform, which is kind of gives a hint as if it would be static, because it's not. So it's an interplay, an interaction in between agency and media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or yeah. you could basically say network. I mean, I, I need to define it because people don't understand what a network is, kind of let alone how to use it, right? So, it's, yeah. it, so instead of platform, which is once it's static, that's basically just optimization. So it's kind of yeah. level two, so it's not bad. But I mean, if you want to go level three, it's uh, an action or yeah. network or... Or obviously, you could call it platform as long as you realize that it is kind of you designing your own platform as a service, and then you need to sort of accept what people are using this is kind of reciprocating with in terms yeah. of what currencies. Now, there's yeah. actually a fourth level, which and John, is, I want to put a point yeah, of clarification uh, yeah, on level yeah, three. Sure. Um, one thing mathematically, and this goes back to the archetypes and beauty, there are two ways to recognize an archetype. Either you hyper focus on the archetype right there, or you realize that the archetype comes from the context of interacting with other archetypes. You know, a yeah. fish is not swimming unless it's in water. You yeah. know, um, so the difference in perspective that is helpful with that is as you move up the ladder of abstraction, you know, or work up the spiral to use your model. Um, you take in more experiences and you come to realize that the idea is not to form groups and clusters that are concrete and made up of hard boundaries, but to realize that there's a gradient, as you mentioned earlier, between, yeah. like, if you're talking hot and cold, you can jump to a level of abstraction and say they're not opposites, they're both measures of the temperature of the water. 
Now, yeah. you go from looking at the categories to looking at the relationship between the two categories. In a network, you want to look at the relationship. It's yeah, like exactly. once you've created your platform and you're sitting there, you want to look at how does your platform relate with the environment. That's, that's how you survive. That yeah. means you look at the input, the feedback that you're getting, the input. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, 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 you could say uh, how tensegral are platforms. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah, and this is kind. Of, this is kind of where also, um, if I've sort of forgiven, kind of begging forgiveness for possible readers and viewers, because the three words images, ideas, and insights mm -hmm. are commonly known as kind of having individual definitions. And I mean, obviously, there's good reasons for why our images, ideas, and insights are individual as long as they are kind of seen as sparks of synapses inside our neocortex. But if we instead reframe that to see them as sort of access characteristics. Mm -hmm. And then we could see that if you have an image in your mind, any which image, as an access point to the collective psyche. Yeah, as an affordance, a, a social Ex affordance. Exactly, an affordance, right. Yeah. And an idea is then the coming to consciousness. Mm -hmm. B afforded by that image. Once you sort of yeah. hold on to that image long enough, could, if you basically just look at any image that sort of gets constellated in your mind, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously it can be triggered from some external stimuli, but I mean, any image. And then if you hold on to that image long enough, sure mm -hmm. enough, there will be some kind of I idea mm -hmm. related to that image, right? Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the three simple ones is can I eat it? Will it kill me? Can I shag it? Right? Those yes. are the, the three core ideas, right? Yeah. And then the, thir the third I word, kind of the insight, mm -hmm. is Reflective. when you apply, when you hold the image for long enough, the idea had, has constellated. It could be kind of a core, kind of primordial idea, or it could be kind of a very nuanced idea like quantum physics. Uh, then the insight is when you apply the idea to your own unique gradient. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then it means that, and what is the gradient again? Well, it is uh, catalyzed by your own constellated set of archetypes, whatever mm -hmm. con archetypes and gods and goddesses are in play at this particular juncture and moment. Mm -hmm. But what's the pull? Well, the pull is uh, the perceived lack of beauty. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to sort of very simply delineate our own wayfinding. Mm -hmm. Then we have kind of what is kind of uh, percolating inside, wanting sort of to erupt if we have mm -hmm. a two-statue definition of our kind of personal self. And what is pulling us? What, what are we kind of attracted to? Well, yeah. it's kind of obvious for most people that we are attracted towards beauty. Yes. But this is where kind of very kind of eloquently described by you already that this is very often, at least up until now, has been hijacked, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is and where the, the one of the, as I have learned, one of the unique value propositions with your stuff, whether it's dystopia or, or, or mess memes and so on, is that it's basically offering different perspective, but it's not only a different perspective, any which one. It's a different perspective, and it still honors uh, the primordial creative, procreative nature of all the adjacent poss possibles that yep. kind of sits there kind of waiting to be uh, channeled through yep. us. Yeah, and it avoids the rush to cognitive closure. Yeah, because yeah, you know, there's I mean, more, more, more formation all the time. They yeah, I, mean, I mean, the rush to cognitive closure, the rush to sort of both project and disown towards the, 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 the bad other yeah. That's basically just like that. That's the cognitive collective equivalent of wanking, right? Yeah. And yeah. as it's like if I go into want the to sunset. Go, if if yeah. I go, if I want to go wanking, and that's fine, right? But if I kind of apply kind of a more Zen aspect to it, I could at least last for a little longer, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to end in three seconds, right? Yeah. And it's, it's the difference between gourmet and gourmet, because yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, people understand this when it comes to McDonald's. Yeah, I mean McDonald's is fine, right? If you want to just stuff your face and become slightly unhealthy and slightly Diabetes. obese right. and, and, and diabetic <laughs> eventually, right? And and um, so you could say that and Alzheimer's, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to to, to make kind of possibly a huge leap, uh, the 
the default version of dystopia already exists, and it's called yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. So it's 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 if people then would argue that, oh, but you are talking about archetypes. Oh, it's way too difficult. No, it's not. They're the uh, biggest toy company. They're the biggest real estate company. They move the potato sales. Um, they basically control movie sales through the use of what you know what toy Happy Meal is going on. Yeah. This is this is Wister Wister Cosmetics. And the yeah. word cosmetic has a G in it, as in cognition. Yeah. You know, it's the ability to warp the perception of beauty. Now, what what uh, I want to bring up is something that you mentioned in the conversation community a few weeks ago, uh, the concept of local optima. In yeah. the search for cognitive closure, a lot of times we don't reach real beauty. Okay? So I'm going to go back with the definition. Beauty is resonance across seeming gaps we discover through art, science, and play. Art, science, and play involves throwing creative ideas out there throwing hypotheses out there, trying something out in the safety of maybe parental observation, maybe with a friend when you play fight, they won't kill you, yet you get to improve. You know, I got yeah. Let's Play behind me because we were working. Yeah. With, and your, your amygdala is not hijacked. You're a little bit excited, you know, because it, um, you're, you're fighting or whatever, you know, but there's a referee there, so you're not going to get stabbed at the end of this thing. It's not death, but improvement. Yeah. Now, um, when you have local optima, it feels like you've reached a point of you, you're you're at a point of lower energy. You know you, you don't have the cognitive dissonance. You get a little cognitive closure, but you're eventually going to have to climb to another. Um, I have an E sub A model in my brain. Uh, you need yeah, activation yeah. energy to be motivated to get over to the top of that energy spot to look around and realize that the local optima is not where you're going to rest. Or not where you're going to stop. It's where you're going to rest. Think for a bit, and then you got to jump to level of abstraction and get to your your yeah, ideal yeah. optimal max, like you know, maximum or minimum. Yeah. yeah, I mean, th this is where it do that this also ties in with innovation. I mean, if you if you if you map innovation to a fitness space, you could say that first you obviously need to access that fitness space. You need mm -hmm. to sort of, I mean, if if you are kind of in Facebook, that you need to do Facebookish things, mm -hmm. uh, and if you are on Google Plus, you need to go Google Plus ish. Kind of things. So to do, if you're on LinkedIn, you need to spam me with crap. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, on. exactly. <laughs> and, and if you realize that that Google Plus is basically finding uh, other people you can meaningfully connect with outside your your typical graphs, mm -hmm. then you're all set, right? That's kind of the whole. I mean, so you can sort of just make discard all the other stuff. Stuff how to do Google Plus. That's mm -hmm. the whole. That, that's the instruction manual, right? Yeah. Connect meaningfully with other people outside your existing graphs. Done. Find beauty. N knock yourself out. Yeah. Find beauty. Exactly. I mean, uh, reown your projections. You could just kind yeah. of say that if you want to go kind of even deeper, even more meaningful connectivity. Yeah. But I mean, that kind of invokes vulnerability and stuff. So people would normally not do that. But that's, it's, yeah. it's there is an option. Now, uh, but that's just access. Then yeah. you need I to. Then I you need to att attract. Yeah. Now, att attract is basically signal clearly, authentically. Uh, yeah, you go from content marketing to purple content. So I'm I'm going to sort of spin a little bit more on kind of how, how purple content can be seen as a kind of a crazy bastard mixing between John Keldon and and Jimi Hendrix, right? Yeah. And so so purple content is kind of very well defined. And uh, and it, 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 it's the line in his kind of song, "Excuse me while I kiss the sky." Yeah. It, it's 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 if people don't get that level, they will stifle themselves, and their own original kind of creative, attractive stuff will not get out, and they will not attract kind of a, a larger set of followers, right? Yeah. So they will kind of miss out on. I mean, the whole the whole idea of having a couple of million people available here for the connecting. Now, yeah. once you have access and attract in place, you need to amplify. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can amplify beauty is to anneal the archetypes. Mm -hmm. you, you basically need to sort of uh, do the alchemy thing with your own shit. Yeah. And it's, John, yeah. they need the archetypes because remember how we said how you have to recognize something you have to recognize it. You know, you yeah, have to. Yeah. Think, it has to be familiar subconsciously. The archetypes, you know, when when there's nothing new. If you can't, what's new is a new combination of things in such a way that people find them enjoyable. Like I threw a mermaid in the bathtub and filled it with milk. 
Yeah. And and breasts. I I threw three breasts in there. Three because people like odd numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Some people complained and wanted five, by the way. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with five. But <laughs> you, you you have to add an element of novelty, and novelty is yeah. not is not like Seth Golden said. Avoid the meatball Sunday. You you have to find the symmetries. You have to find the beauty, the resonance across the gaps. Find the the similarities and put the similarities together. But then you yeah. have to kind of know that there have to be some gaps. There have to be gradients. Now, the way Google is doing that with interest networks is if you really pay attention to who you're, you're hitting a lot of different communities if you're using the platform right. And you're looking at stuff and you're commenting. You're finding your relevance. You're finding you because Google, you'll find that you keep running into the same people in all these different communities. Yeah. These are your shared interests. These are your cognitive, these are attractors in your brain. This is your language. This is your culture. This is your signal. This is what you're attracting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, this this is important, but this is kind of where we can sort of tie into the David Amazon stuff, right? Yeah. Where he identified the four V words. Yeah. Which is basically kind of if you want to go deep into the archetypes, mm -hmm. you have veracity, and yeah. veracity is kind of the algorithm are nudging us along towards. Self-disclosing, uh, reowning our own projection, reowning our own introjections. Yeah. Also, yeah. so deep is covered by veracity. Mm -hmm. Now, resilient and formative and collective that they don't map snugly and easily towards the three because they are kind of in a bit of a mix. And 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 uh, there's lots of reasons for that. We can cover that in a different sense. But the other three V words that maps nicely and in kind of in a web with resilient, formative, and collective mm -hmm. is Volume, velocity, and variety. Yeah, volume could, is part of the signal. Velocity yeah. is part of the signal. Yeah, so volume is obviously cl the closest kin to collective for, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Right, there's 600 million active Google Plus accounts, so that that's mm -hmm. the volume for you. Now, yeah. resilience is uh, uh, the variety. I mean, you could mm -hmm. say and 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 look into kind of requisite variety, which is mm -hmm. how a kind of a uh, a, a temporary clustering of stuff called a Holon or a team or a company or a community or a village or something, mm -hmm. how that can sort of be resilient in a larger ecosystem, in a larger network, and that yeah. is through requisite variety. It's yeah, kind of John, a, a sincerity would be worth redefining in this point because you mentioned sincerity yeah. earlier, and if you could explain that concept, or I, I can either way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sincerity is, you could say that. Um, when you have a sufficient um, claim yeah. and uh, an and embracing of all these four, both mm -hmm. both in the terms of from the archetypal level, deep, resilient, formative, and collective, but also on a, you could say, a, a pure network perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we could put them in the same order. So yeah. deep, resilient, formative, collective maps more or less towards uh, veracity, uh, variety, velocity, and volume. Yeah. I mean, I could yeah. sort of just mention briefly, kind of how how is uh, velocity mapping against sort yeah. of formative? It, it, that's basically just kind of an OODA loop, if you will, a kind of a convivial OODA loop, mm -hmm. when you have a sufficient uh, acceleration deceleration capability, so you are not kind of at the mercy. Of, of the of network, the waves. yeah, yeah, you you could basically surf the waves, right? Yeah. So the, the the velocity is kind of a network vector. Now, yeah. here is where uh, we don't have to master all these four, and we come equipped with different archetypes and different qualities and different uh, 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 capabilities in all these four qualities. But yeah. if we have a sufficient some modicum at least in all four, mm -hmm. we have tensegrity. Yeah. As, as, as entities and uh, entities here is very interesting because the entity is the um, the emergent part of ourselves mm -hmm. which is uh, spurred by, catalyzed by um, uh, by the archetypes and mm -hmm. we are being pulled by, by, by beauty yeah. uh, so this is where uh, you could say and this is a bit of a leap so if you see so instead of the old 20th century or the old kind of classic antique almost uh, kind of tug in between fate and character, I mean fate is kind of pure collective and character is pure individual. You mm -hmm. can basically define tensegrity 
as a semiosis cycle in between sort of fate, yeah. character, and transegrity itself. Yeah. So then it's, it's very difficult to define transegrity as kind of outside because it's inherent, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I got an example that I yeah. like where um, the dome example, where you have the dome that kind of holds itself up, that dome that I can't remember where it is, but it was able to be bigger because the engineer had it where each like hexagonal structure was pressed against the other hexagonal structures. Yeah. And so the force of holding all the weight up was distributed between each of the structures so that each one felt the minimal amount of pressure pushing yeah. in on it, yet yeah. didn't fall in, causing the entire building to collapse. This is yeah. This is um, that, that, that's a wonderful network. example, and and I can map that onto social networks as well. So if in the near future, if we can see that uh, combining social curation, mm -hmm. but I don't mean kind of mindless resharing, right? We need to sort of add some of our own stuff yeah. to give some inkling towards our readers that this is why. Um, I'm resharing it, right? Anything, yeah. right? And and then combining that with a mindset of paying it forward. Yeah. So so individual kind of um, addition somehow with social curation with paying it forward mindset. That is the social network equivalent of transegrity. Yeah. It's basically and using keywords won't work because words get no. obsolete. Let it I go. mean, it, it, it's it's distributing sort of the payload. It's yeah. just that people don't realize what's the payload, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where we are quite rapidly transitioning from an information-based sense-making to a relationship-based sense-making. And now, yeah. if we look at, because we can look at, at, if we want to, both at sort of beauty and at archetypes from a pure information-based lens, yeah. and then I'd be, we could basically just, we, we wouldn't have needed to sort of say anything in this kind of, Look it up in Wikipedia already, right? And then we could Basically. just have been silent throughout this hangout, right? But if people realize that, hey, these are two living, breathing, kind of embodied spirits, it's just that they happen to be called Mani and, and John in this particular yeah. kind of part of the play, and it's all about weaving, forging almost relationships yeah. with uh, archetypes and with with beauty. Yeah, no, I John. mean, it, 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 uh, and this is kind of important where exactly a kind of a clue, a cue inside the English language, forging these connectivities in a way that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is kind of where we can actually strike a deal both with beauty and with archetypes, right? So because the archetypes, we have something that the archetype doesn't got, haven't got. Implementation, presence. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we come We're equipped with, with, with the, the option of being fully present in our own bodies. Exactly. Now, so, and, and this is, if we have that, it kind of basically just kind of remembering kind of presence and remembering uh, uh, um, embodied cognition and action, uh, biosemiosis, whatever kind of we want to call it, mm -hmm. we can gradually grow into our own beauty. Yep. Now, this is beauty that needs to sort of be redefined. So you could say that our kind of early sen 21st century superheroes, without actually saying it, all those superheroes are beautiful somehow. Yes. So, um, and then it kind of it goes all back to the kind of the definition where we start. Beauty is resonance across mm -hmm. seeming gaps, mm -hmm. rediscovered through art, science, and play. So, yeah. if we uh, uh, sort of distill it down to just some, th let's let's see if we can aim at for three. If we are able to sort of withstand the urges of the archetypes and transform them into kind of constructive urges. So we mm -hmm. just don't go kind of Zeus and just go golden shower on everything yeah. and everyone, right? Inside. And, and, yes. and, and <laughs> we, we, we can pee on desi in, at designated spots, right? Yeah, shower reflectively instead of reflex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reflective yeah. showering. Yeah. That's, right in the that's, corner in which that, you stand, that, is what my that, mom would say. That's just a just wonderful just summing up of the whole thing, kind of, <laughs> to... to, to uh, Please, no, please into the wind. Please consider reflective showering. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and Bingo. <laughs> and the 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 gap itself is then created, right? So I mean, we are a little bit ugly parts of us, right? 
because it's we are not perfect it would be very boring if we were but this is also how we can adopt a transformative stance towards this ugliness whether it's me as a gas bag or whether it's kind of, I'm anything right uh, I mean I choose I guess me as a personality fetishist <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I kind of err on the side of gas bag because what I kind of fear even more than that is being boring right yes. so it, it's kind of just my, my quirks but these are to be transformed to be redeemed into sort of to borrow a kind of philosopher term, kind of a becoming beauty, becoming ourselves. Yeah. And this is where it matters. I mean, becoming ourselves. We toy with that word. So instead of ourselves, we change selves to spell it Z C E L L V E S. Yes? Like so ourselves. Right? Yeah. So then and then we can go full midichlorian even. I mean, in, in, if we want to sort of not speak Star Wars language, we can speak ordinary language, we can call it mitochondria instead, yeah. right? But the, the thing here is that then it becomes uh, resilient. So probably yes. the resilient part is the, the thing we need to sort of um, uh, learn and get, get up to speed with the most. I mean, Deep yeah. has been in training the last two, two millennia with kind of dying on the cross and things like that. I mean the cross yeah. is basically just matter and, mm -hmm. and, and, and dying is dying from your old self and kind of be reborn in your new, new, new self. Yeah, now we need to look at the relationship. Yeah. It's, it's the relations between the entities that create the pattern. You know, we yeah. move from matter to pattern and both are, ant are negentropic, you know, on entropy based yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, that's another way of saying it. So, so you could say that there's a very close Resonance in between reflective showering mm -hmm. and gold. Uh, sorry, <laughs> and, and and I mean negentropic augmentation. Uh, do the visual priming. Of the, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Silly humans. <laughs> so, uh, and maybe I should also kind of say something about sort of the fitness landscape. I mean, the fitness yeah. landscape is. Uh, if you're kind of completely clueless what to do in your own chosen preferred ecosystems, you die. Yes. That's, that's kind of the, the inverse definition of a fitness landscape. If you if I'm if I'm kind of a white honky and I'm in the middle of the hood, I will die, right? Because oh, wait, I'm wait, kind wait, of not wait, clued wait. in kind of what goes on and what, how to stay alive in that particular space, right? Yeah, dodge and that brick coming in the window of the car. So, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Was that Denny? Yeah. What was that dude's name? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, I want to make a quick statement in the transition to fitness landscape. Uh, yeah. I just thought about this since I had my last sip. So this is the marked form of the term banana berry clipple moist wet. <laughs> you know, when people hear banana berry clipple moist wet trickles in vanilla drain in the mayor's basement in dystopia where we make cherry coke rain, this is the marked form. The difference between a marked form and an unmarked form is degree of abstraction. Um, it's the difference between saying we're going out for coffee and getting coffee and saying we're going out for coffee and you get a tea. It's yeah. abstraction. It's the level of yeah. comprehension. Sorry. And this relates to the fitness landscape that you're heading into because when you make the transition across the gap to the gap is the relationship. Yeah. So, okay, so the beauty is finding the kind of relationship. And the way you do that is with your personality, self-awareness, empathy, which yeah. is a plug to if you stop by mindful360.com. Uh, we have a library of full videos on developing your empathy through getting to know your Myers Briggs personality type for free. Yeah, yeah. like hours. <laughs> okay, fitness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this, this is this is good stuff because this allows me to also relate uh, the whole dystopia thing and the kind of whole mayor's basement thing and all that, right? Because those are great ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know that they are great ideas? Well, it's very simple. I came up with them. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That was hard as work, dude. But I mean, th this this is where you could see both the um, uh, the fitness landscape very simply described. Uh, imagine you want to blog, or you want to sort of enjoy success in social media, or you want to do anything or other and all sort of. I mean, 
knock yourself out, right? I mean, it, it's 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 if that's what people think is fun, they should be able to do it, right? Yeah, so any which kind of if you wanted to, to, to be mayor, you wanted to be president of the United States, you wanted to be kind of the, the, the greatest blogger or the greatest food blogger or any which kind, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to come up with a hundred ideas, a hundred different ideas. Oh. Now the fun thing here is that the first 40, 50, 60, there will be pretty awfully bad ones. I mean, yeah. really terrible, right? Yeah, but check then, out Death of Writer's Blog, which I released yeah, last but week. But then a funny yeah, thing happens. Yeah. Then a funny thing happens. It, let, let's say there's 60 of them. Uh -huh. And then the next 30... Will be, they'll be tolerable. When, when tolerable. Kind of, your, your brain is running an empty... I mean, when the brain is kind of... Fuck. Yeah. Even more... Yeah. Then, then the the weird ideas comes out. Yes. Yeah, and then if you kind of persevere, the yes. last the last ten, they mm -hmm. are great ideas. Now, since you have done boring, weird, and great, you can now get context. You can basically triangulate your own ideas because you have mm -hmm. the first sixty who are really boring. They are kind of the anchoring, or you could say context. Mm -hmm. um, the the thirty who are weird, mm -hmm. you, gotta, you gotta filter that shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, they are what you kind of mentioned previously, novelty. Mm -hmm. Now, the ten great ones, since th there's ten different great ideas, this allows you to to choose in mm -hmm. a way that evokes edge. Yeah, but John, you can't and, and hand someone your idea without going through the familiarity sandwich. They will regurgitate. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. You can't hit them with the novelty until you got to foreplay it. You got to tell your story with the first yeah. sixty ideas as 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 clitoral rubbing. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to warm yeah. it up with the yeah. titties. You know? Yeah, the third one, the middle one. Carry on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is where. Uh, why did I mention fitness landscape? Because mm -hmm. once you have the, all the hundred ideas, so you get the, the, the sixty boring, the familiar ones, the thirty really weird ones that you really don't know what to do with. But they were what sort of uh, midwifed the last ten. Mm -hmm. um, then you suddenly have mapped your own uh, fitness landscape, yep. and yep. it's it's already. Contextualize, or rather, this recontextualize already as well. Yeah, yeah. But don't stop along the way, because people always stop along the way. As soon as they start to get the thirty that are that are kind of, uh, they um, they they judge themselves to death, and they never get to the last ten. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. You, I mean, you have this to is where it out. I mean, we could almost design an app that would precision tell them that uh, there's two pitches. Ten more here. vomits to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like people usually do two, one, one or two options, mm -hmm. and they never choose the third. I mean, going full hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have had clients, grown men, cr breaking down and cry mm -hmm. when they realize I wanted them to do one hundred, and one hundred means one hundred. It doesn't mean fifty nine. So people. And we're not counting by fives. <laughs> no, and they stop at one pitfall is stopping by fifty nine. Mm -hmm. Because then it's basically just wanking, right? It's just self-validation. I mean, the, the old, boring, uh, 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 recognizable ideas it was just rehashing kind of existing stuff, which is kind yeah. of really, really boring. I mean, yeah. as as I mean, obviously, as kind of computation goes, it kind of works, right? But as ideas that is going to create any value, they are useless because it already exists. Yeah. Someone else have already done that and slightly better and slightly cheaper and in China and India already. So just yeah. give it a rest. Now, yeah. but the the other uh, pitfall is stopping at idea number sixty one, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the first weird idea that comes into the mind gets mislabeled as the great idea. Yeah, that's gonna make people vomit. Yeah, and and this is kind of where. I mean, I could, could give you examples if I would sort of thoroughly want to embarrass uh, people in, in networks and wanting to make me hugely popular at the same time, and would be probably would be great fun. So I, <laughs> no, I, I will restrain myself. But you can see time and time again when people are putting stuff up, they call it content, but yeah. it's fairly obvious to anyone else that this is a really, really terrible idea. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This this one should have been killed. Yeah, it's one of your ugly babies. And yeah. I like to put my ugly babies out because I get feedback and, you know, I know which sperm not to spray it, you know, yeah. how, how, how to not golden shower from then on, <laughs> yeah. you know. But you, you're not done. Just because it's weird doesn't mean you're, you're done. You're not creative because no. it's weird. Creativity no. is about putting out a lot of volume and then doing the work of evaluating that which you created that was different from what everyone else is spewing yeah, and seeing exactly. which ones elicit a sense of beauty, a sense of resonance across seeming gaps, uh, yeah. you know, a, a discovery, a sense of aha, the ones that cause people to have a sense of awe. When you show someone something of beauty, they, they their, their pupils dilate. And it's fun doing this with white people because, you know, when y'all's pupils dilate, it's like, ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, people call me up, they're like, is, is the mesmer a, a metaphor? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, in body cognition, everything is a metaphor. Fuck you, Manny. <laughs> you know? And they have that look. They're like, what does it mean? I'm like, what do you think yeah. it means? <sighs> and and, and if, if they're really frustrated, uh, give me the simple explanation. Yeah. 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 Ask them for the simple explanation <laughs> as they perceive it to be. Can you tell me what it means? And now, uh, you need, and now you need to tell me what it really means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will be, as soon as you walk outside, you realize that the core semiosis is context. Go try to explain that shit to someone, you know? Yeah, I mean, and actually we can, right? Because if people would remember from this kind of massive sen that there's four D words, mm -hmm. uh, veracity, mm -hmm. uh, velocity, volume, and uh, variety. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that came out in a different order. But I mean, if you go by deep resilient formative and collective, it's veracity, variety, velocity, and volume. Mm -hmm. Now, those four serve as perfect scaffold or perfect framework or perfect um, uh, reframing lens, uh, perfect prop for your cognition to make sense of those 100 ideas. Yeah, and, begin with archetypes, folks. Yeah, and the hundred ideas gives you. I mean, you 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 you, you just need to do one thing: cram out all those ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, load yourself up with input until your mind starts shitting Shit bricks. Book. Yeah, yeah, books or bricks or anything, right? Yeah, lots of ideas out there. And to your point. That's kind of also what I do. I, I put some of my boring ideas out and some of my weird ideas out, some of my great ideas out, because then it, I'm sort of engaged in sort of the, the, the collective intelligence, the, 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 the constellated archetype. Now, but the, the gift from, from the ideas towards the four V, v, v words are mm -hmm. context. Now, yeah. so then you basically have a little semiosis machine. And the semiosis machine in ordinary English is possibly uh, relevant information, meaningful information. Yeah. I mean, you need to sort of see that information is in formation. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's something that. Let me give you kind of an, an example of that as well. There's there's an old kind of hierarchical definition that doesn't work anymore. That's kind of is data, information, knowledge, wisdom. Kind mm -hmm. of some kind of a borrowing from kind of a Maslowian kind of thing turned abstract, and then it's kind of some kind of a D Y K W kind of staircase almost. But that's obviously just wrong because now we live in networks. But yeah. we can still kind of use parts of that and see if it, there's a from data to information. Yeah. I mean, data is basically ones and zeros. How do you turn it into information? Well, you can apply sense making mm -hmm. and then you can see knowledge mm -hmm. as feedback and, 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 and yeah. feed forward loops yep. so out of knowledge you can sort of loop knowledge back to data mm -hmm. what data you select basically mm -hmm. and the more knowledge you have the, 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 the better you grow become into kind of selecting data yep. and the more knowledge you have the more you can evaluate your information but the more knowledge you have the better your options are in selecting what sense making approaches. I mean, you can have your kind of all boring plain vanilla 
sense making approach basically kind of the uh, will it kill me can I eat it can I shag it right because yeah. that's kind of just basically what all sense making is mm -hmm. but you can also refine it a bit more by learning about archetypes learning about yeah. beauty learning about patterns yeah. Yeah. can uh, I make it beautiful can I make it evocative can yeah, I yeah. Make it valuable enough that people enjoy experiencing it help people yeah. learn something about themselves exactly so you could say that the images can be beautiful I mean the, the, the great images the beautiful be the beautiful images are beautiful I mean epic shit is epic uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now ideas can also be beautiful but yes. you won't get to the beautiful ideas the great ideas until you have sort of traversed and yeah. gotten to your own edge yeah. and the only way to get to your own edge is you Just need to trudging through the shit sludging through the the, the the, the, the things are fucked up and shit. Now, if you see that 90% of the content that goes out in social media is basically politicians are fucked up and I'm angry about it, or yeah. here's my latest social media stuff yeah. and you should probably Welcome buy my Welcome to the wasteland, book. Ulysses. <laughs> yeah, Welcome and, to the and, wasteland, uh, Ulysses. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's the wasteland, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, uh, people should stop fucking themselves up at Keep least when, when the result of fucking themselves up is resulting in them fucking others up, right? So they should mm -hmm. just stop doing that. And, and no as a caution, caution note to anyone kind of viewing this, if you're fucking things up for others, stop. Yeah. Now, uh, and mend your sinful ways. And, and I mean, if you want to create, commit sin, at least commit some original sin. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah, insights. Make it can also, <laughs> yeah, insights can also be beautiful, mm -hmm. and this is where insights are. Here's a very simple one: an insight becomes beautiful when it's applied. Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of possibly kind of uh, not true for most people but then they need to sort of start back with what images are they choosing are they choosing boring ugly terrible images or are they choosing beautiful images yeah. now it sort of rests on having them chosen beautiful images right so they are evoking their own true nature yeah. uh, out of which comes beautiful ideas and then yeah. they will have to persevere until the beautiful ideas comes out and then they yeah. need to sort of context express. is super important yeah. Because if, if you're in a group that are sharing three titted mermaids and you you show a flower, what you've done is you've misread your target psychographic. Unless the flower has a mermaid with it and three petals that match the titties, you know, it's yeah. context. You're you're looking at a psychographic. You can't be out. You have to be empathic. You can't be out there judging. Oh, these guys are doing whips. These guys are doing chains. You know. Um, these are your humans. These are your people. These these are your customers. These people yeah. need something. So yeah. if you're so busy pushing your product on them and at the same time not taking in what they perceive to be beauty because you're too busy judging it, being disgusted, you're not going to create anything because you're dissociating. You're, you're, yeah. ah, you're repelling it. You're not going to become creative because you're not taking in the information. You're yeah. kind of brick I mean, if, if if we go by Demeter and Aphrodite, if mm -hmm. I would say, if I'm, someone would ask me, why three titties? And then I would mm -hmm. say, it's obvious because out of two of them, you get sort of breast milk. And out of the third one, you get Coke. I was going to say, out of the third one, you get pleasure. But that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, there's I a mean, motorboat <laughs> metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, because I'm kind of prone on making kind of some, some small nudges toward people rediscovering how fucked up they are by media, right? So, yeah. because that is kind of how they treat Coke. I mean, they, they they suck that bottle as there's no tomorrow, right? Yeah, as if it didn't have like acidity in it. <laughs> that is, fucker is right. Is, is is there lots of sugar and and some 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 instant gratification out of that? Yeah, bottle? open yes. open happiness, Pavlov. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suck, suck that bottle. Yeah. Uh, squeeze that jug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick story for you. Yeah. My my kid was talking to my wife, and he said, um, something something about boobs. You know, and he just said it to her. She's like, "Is that the right word for it? Isn't there another word you could use?" He's like, "Well, Daddy says jugs." I'm like, "Oh, you just roll Daddy <laughs> under the bus. Just la <laughs> bus." The number 49 passes, just roll me under that. I'm, and my wife looks at me, I'm like, 
I call them fun bags too sometimes, and she just because she, I, I like for my kid to have all of the most twisted words in his lexicon because I don't ever want him to be somewhere and be like, oh, they said a word and I'm startled. I say to him, I'm like, they're words. Yeah. Yeah. Just get over it. But yeah, back I mean, from the it, jugs. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it, obviously, if you want to sort of do the full metaphor kind of uh, unlearning boot camp, right? We need to sort of remember that. It's all play, right? It's Veda, Leela, all through and through, right? So once we're using words, we are kind of engaging in some sort of silly pretend plays, and, and yeah. nothing of Word it is play. real. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but still, and this is where, why it's important with the kind of reframing. So if we see images and ideas and insights as access points for collective intelligence to work through us, right, then we are kind of participating and playing well with our own archetypes, right? So, so everything becomes easier, but not easier in kind of the default way, but easier in the way that it was once sort of meant to in a kind of a, as Mihai Mishenshiheim would say, kind of flow, right? Yeah. Uh, and it will still be hard work, but it will be fun. Rewarding. It will be rewarding. It will be, rewarding. It will be meaningful. So, um, all these words we have sort of woven in this end, kind of archetypes and transegrity and beauty. Now, one word I haven't amplified possibly enough, that uh, if we see the patterns at coexisting in an individual mind and in the collective, we are um, opening up to be impacted by culture. And yes. I mean, culture is one of those difficult words that is almost impossible to define, but I mean, everyone has and needs to have their own sort of definition. It's kind of an, an ongoing redefining, and that is kind of what culture also is, in a way, right? It's kind of standing ways, standing patterns. I mean, meaningful yes. patterns. I mean, me put me putting clothes on because I will go out naked here in Oakland, Sweden, I will be put away, right? So it's lots, lots, yes. lots of patterns to go. But yeah. uh, if we change it slightly, so these patterns are coexisting individually and collectively, mm -hmm. But then we could just change it from coexisting to coextensive. Yes. And then we have just semiosis. So yep. then we have language, right? So then we see that language and culture can't exist without each other. So culture yep. takes care of the coexisting part, the bargain, if you will, and language takes care of the coextensive, or rather, if I want to be precise, languaging. Yeah, I go long and power wall for that one, you know, to go yeah. semiotic. So. And, and uh, if we then see uh, those patterns, if we then sort of add beauty to it, just as a possibility, as an option, let's assume that most people are hitting themselves with an ugly stick, right? And that kind of the default behavior. But let's say there's another option that you get, it's going to beautify themselves. They can point to Harry, Harry, Harry Potter magic wand to themselves and say beautify instead of stupefy. Yeah. Um, and then um, if we add beauty, then it's these patterns are suddenly co-creative. Mm -hmm. So you could say that it's from coexisting, that's basically just culture, to co-extensive, then we kind of have and one slight added degree of freedom and, and we kind of languaging. I mean we'll play with words. Mm -hmm. And then it's co-creative mm -hmm when we see that we're not just a sort of word playing just for the sheer hay of it. I mean, that's also fun, but it's kind of not the, the, the end game. But just for the sake of argument, if the end game is kind of the, the universe and us are slightly imperfect beings, but our job number one is sort of to beautify it and making whatever significant dent in the process and universe we can, right? Yep. Then it's very simple to delineate your process. It's from co-exist to co-extend to co-create. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is also, we are kind of fully able to tri triangulate that and the three primary triangulation practices are art, science and play. Mm -hmm. So um, people are, some people are not that keen on reacquaint themselves with their own bodies or reacquaint themselves with their own relationships with significant others or a family or kids or something 
and they are scientists. Some people are more into experience, kind of the whole messiness of relationships, and they are artists. Mm -hmm. And some people are crazy and funny and, and, and perfect enough to go kind of full whole hog. Yeah, it is the quality. rebirth of the Renaissance, yeah. man. The polymath yeah. reemerges. Renaissance, and, and that's kind of play, right? And yeah. it's play, playfulness, serious play, infinite games, the whole enchilada. Yep. Uh, and um, this is probably, if there is a quinta essentia to archetypes themselves, it's probably that sheer uh, playfulness. Mm -hmm. I mean, if uh, you see that... But, yeah, I mean, if, if, if we look at kind of all the 7 billion people now and some of the really crazy things we are doing, right? We, we, I mean, we can send people to the moon and soon to kind of different star systems, but we can't seem to take, be able to take care of our own trash in our own cities, right? So it's kind of... It's it's a mixed bag, right? So we are doing some pulling some really crazy stunts right now, and yeah. let, let, let's let, let's try and see and have the third of us, more than two billion of us, starving to death. Yeah. It, it, wow, what what a yeah. cool game! No, uh, so all kinds of plays are, all kinds of games are happening kind of simultaneously, right? but this is evoking a deeper thing. Uh, I mean, but this is not, again, the 21st century superheroes. I want to cram that in as well. Previously, we were kind of struck down with fate mm -hmm. every time we wanted to mess with the gods because we didn't have the neocortex up to speed to deal yeah. with, with the archetypes and the patterns, right? So we, yeah. bad stuff happened, with, with whether it was Tiersevs mm -hmm. or, or Agamemnon. Or, or at the stake. Sorry. Yeah, bad stuff happened when you messed with the gods, right? You got yeah. um, inflated ego, and you turned a dictator, you turned an it's asshole, really you turned a narcissist, or you turned, or you turned plutocrat, or you turned. I yeah. mean, I mean, plutocrat is kind of a fun thing, right? Because it's uh, it's just hardest. I mean, hardest is just kind of material riches, and if you if you choose hardest as your number one guy, your your sort of archetypal sugar daddy, you will get offensively materially rich. But you, I mean, um, Hardest has this kind of side effect that he just wants to sort of fuck everything else kind of really thoroughly and go medieval gangster on everyone else's behind, yeah. right? So yeah. it's kind of, it kind of comes with the territory. So you, you basically should, it's usually not a, not a good idea to just choose one god, just one yeah. archetype, right? Yeah, um, balance is important. Yeah, I mean, if you just go all Aphrodite, and if you want to sort of be 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 all loving as a woman, well, a great many women have tried that and turned it into one of the oldest professions already. So, so um, no, that's not yeah. a good idea either. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to go all Artemis as a woman, um, you basically end up with a older guy who takes care of you and ignores you and then you could go on to sort of suffer in solitude in the woods. Mm -hmm. Objectified. Yeah, that's not also, that's not a good idea either. Or you could do obviously Hestia, Vesta. Then you also choose an older guy who usually also dies uh, or is impotent in some other capacity and you basically end up running a house, household and you complain bitterly because you have to do everything. Yeah. Uh, so, the gods always exact their price, their kind of, their, their pound of the flesh. Yeah. So, but this is only if you choose to mate with one god to the exclusion of all others. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of loath and wary to sort of turn this into a recipe, but if I used to absolutely have to, because people want simplistic answers, right? And this is a video, so I here comes now the John simplistic answer corner. You can sort of ignore all the other things, and I will put kind of a fast forward to here when we put this video up. Now, any which god you choose, any which archetype you you, you obey, add just a tiny tiny bit of trickster to it, yeah, and you will fare infinitely better. Your 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 fates will look. Much more favorably upon you. So this is where, yes. and they will contrary, to what, shower you. <laughs> contrary to what people believe, this will not anger your main sugar daddy god sure. goddess archetype. On the contrary, because they will 
have a better vessel to work through, namely us, our yeah. bodies, our minds. Yeah. Now, so the um, obviously one of the scary parts in this simplistic answer is also that if you want to sort of consciously mate with an archetype, if you want to do solitary huntress or a prostitute or favored son or plutocrat rich bastard or any which other kind of game there is existing right now in, in, in the social sphere, knock yourself out, fine. But remember that these gods require uh, you to be a willing receptacle for them impregnating you with lots and lots of ideas. Uh, it, it's 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 just part of the bargain, right? So, so mm -hmm. this is why I want to sort of first anchor that these are access points. You yeah. didn't, uh, you, you the ideas weren't yours fully to begin with. It's kind of just access points to something that is kind of collective uh, information. And and this is also explains possibly also success to sort yeah. of to to have a simplistic s recipe for success. Uh, the success is already guaranteed or not. Mm -hmm. It's success or failure already by you having chosen what particular sets of ideas. Yeah. So having a set of great ideas and being courageous enough to just go out there and put them out. And keep putting them out. And keep, keep putting, putting them out. out and Evolve them and keep putting them out. I mean, there's a wonderful Swedish rock act called The Hives. They sort of played uh, before Rolling Stones in one gig, I think. So they put kind of two colored, uh, nicely shined uh, shoes, razor sharp uh, pinstripe suits and the whole thing. They look really weird, right? But they chose 10, 15 years ago, very kind of simple strategy. We are going to do our thing. Yeah. And lo and behold, they got famous, right? You could argue kind of, kind of in the grand order of scheme of the universe, it kind of doesn't amount to any kind of which hill of beans, right? But for them and how they want to sort of define their own umwelt, perfect, right? Because they're doing their thing. Now, this is such a simple thing that most people will kind of blatantly miss this success recipe, right? So whatever pinstripe suit you want to put up, or whatever kind of messments or whatever vanilla drain or whatever cherry cocaine or whatever, if you want to turn a, 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 a evil, um, rich bastard plutocrat or anything, right? It's the ideas, once you've sort of constellated the archetypes and once you have pursued in your own definition of beauty, the ideas will sort of flood your mind. Your mm -hmm. task is sort of to build ongoing discernment or you could call it wisdom. Uh, put it out there. So the neocortex is in charge of doing the Bayesian chaotic computing, basically generating tons of, of boring, uh, weird and great ideas in yeah. all in a big mix and the heart is responsible for cranking these babies out yeah. no matter what, doing your thing basically. Yeah. And um, that's it really. I mean obviously there's millions that's and millions simple. of combinations depending on what the particular combinations of archetypes gets constellated in our own minds. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's still a finite set of archetypes, right, we, which you can sort of accomplish a great deal. Obviously, you and I know that there's a kind of an advanced, turbocharged kind of archetypes on stereos thing going on in the mm -hmm. 21st century, where we can sort of begin to be creative with archetypes themselves. Yeah. So instead yeah. of yeah. mermaids, we call yeah. mess merms, right? Yeah. So, so um, uh, and this is where, in order for this, for people to fully realize this kind of on steroids kind of addition turbocharge of success, people also need to sort of let go of and unlearn some of the uh, basically re rediscovering that there's a possible new covenant. So we don't need to sort of grovel before the archetypes. Yeah. The archetypes want us to sort of be uh, partners. Yeah, in whatever in whatever kind of a definition we we choose to sort of to, to put that word right, and yeah. partners mean then kind of willing embrace partners in crime partners in business full yeah, co-creation with your seminal work. <laughs> yeah, seminal work it is. <laughs> I mean, you could say that this is even more simplistic that uh, your success is dependent on how seminal you become. Mm -hmm. 
golden shower, everything. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if, if if the trickster then allows you to. I, I have to do the visual anchor. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. If the trickster then allows you to have slightly more of the neuroplasticity brought to bear, yep. so you can actually not only hold those thoughts, those ideas, images, ideas, insights, but you can also mold them, you can emulate, you can express, you can tweak them, you can hack them, you can modify and, and continuously evolve these images. And you can try them insights. in different contexts. Yeah. A lot of times if you get negative feedback in one context, try some other contexts. Yeah, this is kind of Don't where I can ideas. find that... Uh, I mean, obviously there's two mindsets here you can choose, right? One is the old one, which is kind of really bad, increasingly worse. And that is scarcity. And <laughs> scarcity is, you should probably just not listen to this video at all, because scarcity is scarcity. And scarcity means that you should grovel before the mm -hmm. gods, and you should have your life filled with mostly meaningless suffering, because mm -hmm. scarcity, right? Or you could choose abundance, and abundance is suddenly where... Uh, the more you put out in a network, the more you kind of make yourself kind of visible, meaningfully connected, uh, making a dent in the universe and in your ecosystems, the more the universe and the ecosystems and all the other players, participants and co-creators, the more they are able to uh, respond, right? Yep. Because if we don't provide any signal to the ecosystem, how on earth could they respond otherwise, right? You can't. But if we put out stuff out there, we can sort of have people and other entities and ecosystems respond to us. And once we have that, the feedback, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can't do because we have feedback. We, we don't have to guess anymore because we have the feedback already. So this, is where, this is kind of also simplistic, but anyway, uh, you could say that, and this is kind of a bit messed up, and apologies for that because I'm starting with knowledge. and But for the sake of the argument, let's say the archetypes exist. So let's say they are kind of, they are, they are the primordial patterns of knowledge, whether you look at them from information or from, from relationships, or a mix of both. So then we can start with knowledge, and the knowledge then allows us to sort of to, to, to glean data, to basically mm -hmm. glean patterns from out of the, 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 the media and the ecosystems and the network. To, Once to we have the data, we do patterning, and yep. patterning is not what individuals have understood it up until now, done just by the neocortex. Well, you could say that it is from an individual point of view, but the neocortex is a result of, of, of a couple of millions and billions of years of evolution, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's not ours in kind of some exclusionary sense. Yeah, it's, our, it's our avatar. What's the this, this, thing this in avatar? Stu that stuff that happened before, before we just yeah. suddenly got a neocortex right out of the thin air and out of the blue, right? It yeah. comes with the rest of the body, to just yeah. name one of the, the contexts, right? But yeah. anyway, the patterning of the data, which then turns it into information, and once we have information, then it's kind of back to, to what we said in the exploring the biomimicry kind of sense previously. It kind of goes above the, li the, li the limen. Mm -hmm. And now we can sort of consciously apply all the rest of the stages. But mm -hmm. very simplified, the information then leads to some uh, uh, establishing of context. Or you could call it sense-making. But that's kind of basically, in this particular view, kind of interchangeable. With sense-making, you get context. And with context, you get sense-making. You could yeah. say that context is the structural part of sense-making. And sense-making is the processual part of context. So yeah. And if you it, want another word for context, you can go with, in due time, if you do it right, culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the part of sense-making, the part of context that stood the test of time, is basically synonymous with culture. Yeah. That's a perfect catch. And then, once you have that, you have kind of the next level of knowledge. So then it's kind of back again. So knowledge, data, patterning, information, culture, knowledge. Yeah. And the tensegrity it. is the ability to um, know when to move from, when to make a phase transition. You know? Don't get yeah. stuck with yeah. knowledge and try to impose your knowledge on others. <laughs> That's also a perfect catch because this is where it's kind of a dynamic balance between anticipation and transition. Mm -hmm. So anticipation is when you when you kind of know intuitively or 
if you're wise or if you're experienced or something, that yeah, it's not quite the right time yet, but next week. Yeah. So and, and this is kind of good anticipation, basically. Kind of just basically setting it up for kind of for a good scenario, a good future. Yeah, and then the transition, the transition is comes first that you actually make the move. You actually do yeah. the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hopping off in about two minutes. I gotta make sure I'm ready to go to my kids' wrestling match tonight. <laughs> yeah, but so so let's see if we can do the the nutshell thing is that we have basically covered how to become successful and how yeah. to lead a really happy, deeply meaningful life, right? So it's it's pretty damn good for 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 these videos as they go. Uh, let's see if we can do. Um, I mean, archetypes. To restate, there are patterns. Mm -hmm. You could almost say that they are emergent patterns out of the individual sense making and what has already gone before and is sort of co encoded deep into the very fabric of the universe. Yeah, they are human instincts. collectively. Yeah, yes. yeah. You could say that they are, uh, I mean, life encoded or life enacted or life. Um, uh, Expressed, life materialized, life constrained, conte contextualized probably is better. Or you could say that this is what we've sort of covered is enculturation, yep. uh, to just, just do one simple word. But then the, this, the creative disturbance we've added to the archetype is beauty. Yeah. So this is probably the kind of us going out on a limb. But then the nice thing with this. Since we have the kind of the, the the science to 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 back this up, is that we can basically say to people that do the science, do the math, mm -hmm. test test these babies and see. Then yeah. then you you will basically kind of convince yourself that this this holds. I mean, because instead of these are the top five tips how to be successful in social media marketing and all that sort of the kind of Sorry. horseshit, right? Yeah. And, and, and um. This is how to be a fulfilled, thriving human being that yeah. <laughs> contributes I mean, something to history or contributes something to the universe. And obviously, th there's a bit of a pain by realizing that people who thought they were kind of completely unique individuals, and then you realize, yeah, I've been playing Hephaestus all my life. Wow, what yeah. utterly predictable here comes to sun. <laughs> what utterly predictable things. But this is where the beauty is, right? Because even though the pure archetypes, they are very predictable and they are very few, and tragedy once you just identify with one of them. But if you persevere, mm -hmm. and obviously the one thing that you can do with perseverance is before you rediscover art, science, and play in your life, you best do the default option, which is kind of fear and suffering. So, so, mm -hmm. so that that's also that, that's also cool if you want to do fear and suffering. If that's your but, thing, yeah, it's in James, Charlie <laughs> Cochran, yeah, and leather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I had kind of a moment of self-reflection here. This is just you and me kind of whipping this sorry behind, right? Our every word, but. Uh, that is complimentary. That's on the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we provide cherry coke rain for free on yeah. the house. <laughs> you want you, you want to sort of um, no, I won't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, it was good. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, it was because. But, but but anyway, once you have sort of rediscovered that suffering is kind of foreplay. Yeah. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Art it's science kind of good things to come. <laughs> art science and play is the main course. <laughs> that, did you see how I did that though? You said it was for play. I said it's it's a sign of good things to come. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a seminal sign. <laughs> yeah. And I'm done. <laughs> I mean, the, the, this is. Um, I mean, we could sort of joke with ourselves now and say that this this is one of those seminal seminars, yeah. right? Yeah, it is a seminal seminar. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me let me see if I can throw one of these at him. <laughs> So, uh, we've covered archetypes, yep. and yeah, th this, I mean, you could say that suffering is default to integrity, yep. to just basically give people some kind of respite in terms of kind of that tinge of, of nobility in even in the midst of suffering, right? Because people are, are, people are, people are really um, keen on suffering, right? 
Yeah. I mean, if you it, imagine I mean, that you're pushing out. If you don't push out enough, and when you you find your spot, and remember, I used the dome metaphor, yeah. where each each tile is pushing out to hold each other. If yeah. you're not pushing out enough, you're gonna fall out, and the network that depends on you will fall out. If you're pushing yeah. out too much and forcing your shit on people, you're gonna shatter all the tiles, and y'all are gonna fall the fuck out anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, you could <laughs> say that if you if you sort of implode. Yeah. If you're basically not, if you're cheating on the rest of the universe and you're not doing your thing, then the universe gives you a little nudge called depression. So that that little word and how it's formed, and how someone can sort of be depressed, right? Yeah. It's you're helplessness. Yeah. Yeah. People aren't actually depressed. People are depressing themselves, so yeah. to speak, right? So they yeah. they are kind of choosing. Uh, and again, this ties also in with what, what you said. With wow, here's the first local optima. Let's uh -huh. get let's get stuck here. Yeah, and then you decide the hill's too steep to climb, and you just stay there. Yeah, and and the funny thing is that the more you define that sort of all those kind of adjacent possibles are just sort of steep hills. Well, the adjacent possibles will turn themselves into steep hills, right? And then fixedness. Yeah, and you could just sort of add. Um, leather and chains and handcuffs and everything to it, right? And because cherry coke rain. Yeah, it just works. I mean, yeah. because then you have sort of a, a closed loop uh, universe where it makes sense. So this is a the dangerous thing with the making sense, right? And this is yeah, because then you have cognitive closure. You have yeah. cognitive closure at a failed location. So you could say that. Let's see if we could do the trim tabs here. I'm going to skip the first knowledge. I'm going directly to data. So data, uh -huh. we already identified four trim tabs. And they are uh, veracity, uh, velocity, mm -hmm. no, sorry, veracity, variety, velocity, and volume. So mm -hmm. those are the four trim tabs to data. And then can we identify the trim tabs towards patterns? Yeah, we can. It's the constellated set of archetypes. Uh -huh. You could say the constellation is the trim tab. Uh -huh. I mean, you choose your archetypes wisely. I mean, it's yeah. kind of a golden thread kind of throughout our old conversation here. Now, trim tabs for information, it's trickier. Uh, but in its most general sense, the trim tab for information is cognition. Uh -huh. But I mean, it's it's it's... It's a difficult trim tab, right? And people hate yeah. to think, so so it's it's not a thing; it's a process. It's 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 available as a trim tab if people yeah. want. I mean, you could say that cr creativity is probably the most more well recognized subset of cognition that is a trim tab for information, right? Yeah. But then, the context and the sense making, mm -hmm. you could say that the trim tab is basically just playfulness. Mm -hmm. And then knowledge is. Um, reflection. Yeah. But the overarching trim tab that sort of ties all these together is beauty. Mm -hmm. So this is where if then people want to have a very very simplistic thing, kind of to aim for beauty, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to yeah, sort of to art, uh, science, and, and play. Yeah, and if you then want to sort of uh, continue your suffering and make everyone else's lives miserable as well, you at least have an option to see why is it so? Why am I stuck in this seeming interminable uh, suffering and, and fate? Well, yeah, yeah. you are showering in a way that, that it, it produces ugly offspring, right? Yeah, you're, you're pissing in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On that note, I gotta go so I can make it to my kids wrestling match. <laughs> yeah. Take care, John. Excellent as always. Kay. Pleasure as always. Pleasure. Talk soon. Bye -bye.